This year is the first year in a very long time that I've balanced working between the iPad and the Mac. So I thought it would be interesting to cover uh, the apps and utilities that are specifically on the Mac that I use. Now, I'm gonna be doing my annual what's on my iPad video and I'll cover all like the productivity apps and all that stuff that I, I typically use uh, in that video. This video is sponsored by Delta Hub and the Carpio 2.0. So let's start with the menu bar of the Mac. Bartender is a must have, especially if you have a MacBook or a lot of menu bar items. What this does is it allows you to organize the menu bar items you have into three different camps. So the first is your normal apps that live right in the menu bar. This, I use this for stuff that I need access to all the time, like shortcuts and focus. The second is stuff that lives inside Bartender. For these, you need to click on Bartender to reveal them. This is for stuff that I occasionally need, but I don't want cluttering up my menu bar. And then the third option is just to hide the menu bar app completely. I use this for the Adobe software stuff, plugins, and apps that I just don't need, but you can't get out of the menu bar for whatever reason. My favorite feature of Bartender is the ability to show certain icons dynamically. I have this set up to show Time Machine when it's running. You can also configure it to show third-party apps based on if the icon changes. So I have Timery set up to show me the menu bar item only when I'm actively time tracking. I also use this for another app I'll talk about in just a minute, but it shows me when the app is active. It's a really handy feature. One feature of Bartender includes the ability to determine if you are on a desktop Mac or a MacBook, or if you're on a MacBook that's plugged into a monitor or not. Why this is important is you can set it up so that when you're in laptop mode, instead of Bartender extending out onto the menu bar, it creates a separate bar that drops down. This is really important for MacBooks that have the notch. The next app is AirBuddy, and there's a lot to it, but there's one core feature that I use that just makes this a must install for me, and that's a quick way to connect AirPods and Beats headphones. You can set it up so that when you click on the icon, it quickly pairs to your favorite set of headphones. I have this set up to pair to my AirPods Max. There's also a proximity trigger feature, which is great if I'm not working at my desk and I want to use my AirPods Pro instead. Another feature is profiles, so you can set this up so that when you're listening to music, it turns on noise canceling and sets itself to a specific volume. Or if you're, say, on like a Zoom call, it turns on transparency mode. You can even program system-wide keyboard shortcuts for options like pairing and more. There is a ton of features in this app, but the core purpose of it is to quickly connect to your headphones, which I'm surprised isn't built into macOS, but I'm glad AirBuddy is there to pick up the slack. The next app has a really unfortunate name, and <sighs> I just haven't quite found anything else that does exactly what I want it to do. And this is Amphetamine. Amphetamine is a really simple app that does one thing. It keeps your computer from going to sleep. I use this for when I'm rendering projects, uploading files, or doing big data transfers between my laptop to my NAS. One thing I appreciate about it is you can change the default icon from a pill to a coffee cup. So that way when the app isn't active and the Mac can go to sleep, the cup is empty. When you click on it, it will then activate it and then the cup becomes full. There are a couple of settings I change in this app. The first is duration. I have it set to whenever I activate this app, the Mac stays awake for as long as the app is active. You can set it for different time durations if you want, but I just leave it indefinite. The second is left and right click behavior. I set it so that the left click automatically activates the app and the right click shows the menu. Batteries is a really great app to replace the built-in battery level tool in the menu bar. It does everything the built-in tool does, but more. Specifically, it adds the ability to show the battery life of other devices like headphones, keyboards, and mouses. I'm genuinely surprised Apple hasn't Sherlocked this one. Next up is Eject Bar. This is a simple utility that ejects all external drives you have attached to your computers. There are a few things this app does, but one thing that I really appreciate is it has the ability to just right click on it and it just ejects everything. This video is sponsored by Delta Hub and the Carpio 2.0.
The Carpio is a wrist rest replacement to help prevent injuries while working from your computer. I found this to be a super interesting product. There are a couple of different ways you can use it. The first one is with your mouse. You put the Carpio under your wrist and use your mouse normally. When you need to type, you slide over and you can type right on your keyboard. The Carpio glides with your wrist really easily. There is no friction. The other way is you could actually use two of the Carpios. And this is the way that I've been doing it. I replaced my normal wrist rest with these. When my wrists are on the Carpio, they slide wherever they need to go, whether it's typing on the keyboard, the mouse, or even the Magic Trackpad. It works really well with the Magic Trackpad. Now, I will say the Carpio did take some getting used to. For me personally, it took about four solid days of just writing uh, and working at my computer for it to really click for me. But once it did, I, I really like them. A quick aside, Delta Hub also sent me their felt desk pad and it's really nice. What I like about it, it has this grippy material on the bottom so it doesn't slide or get moved around at all when at your desk. It's just a really nice touch and you all know I love desk mats. If you work a lot from your computer, go check out the Carpio 2.0. I will put a link to where you can get it in the description below. My thanks to Delta Hub for sponsoring this video. Moving on to some utility apps. The first is Raycast. Raycast is a spotlight replacement and it's incredibly powerful. I plan to do a full video just on Raycast in the future, but I wanna hit on some key points right now. In Raycast, you can use it to do all the typical Spotlight stuff like open apps and files, just like in Spotlight. Where Raycast really comes alive is its extensions. I have an extension for my task manager, so I can just dump an idea right into my task manager without ever having to go to the app and change the context that I'm in. So if I'm writing, that means I can stay writing, but also just, you know, dump something in things. I have the same extension also for my calendar as well. You can even type a shortcut name you have in your library and run it right from Raycast. It also allows you to pass input into that shortcut as well. And if you use an app like Authy, you can get a two-factor code right from Raycast. There are so many different types of extensions you can use. Raycast can become the hub for all of those small tasks you run on your computer. This way you don't have to constantly be switching the context of what you're working in to go do something else really quickly. And for me, somebody that has ADHD, that can be just an absolute, just there goes an hour. There is one thing I will admit Microsoft Windows does better than Mac OS, and that is proper window management. The snap to grid feature that Microsoft Windows has is really good, where you can just drag a window to the right side or the left side of the top, and it snaps to that position and then resizes that window appropriately. Now, there are a bunch of third-party apps that can do this on Mac OS, but the one that I really like is Better Snap Tool. In my opinion, it's the quickest way to just get up and running with this feature. A lot of these other apps require just a ton of configuration. The way this works is when you're dragging a window, you can drag it to the corners or the side, and depending on where you drag it, the window will then snap to that position and then resize to fill that spot. So if you drag a window to the left or the right side, it will take up 50% of the screen while snapping to the left or the right. And then you can set up the corners for quarter size windows. And then if you drag a window all the way to the top, it'll take up the full screen. There is a ton of different configuration options in Better Snap Tool, but the thing that I appreciate is its default behavior is very good. And I never really felt like I had to sit here and fiddle with it for half a day to get it just right. But there are options that you can go into and you can change the behavior of like what the stoplight buttons do or what happens when you're dragging a window while holding a modifier key, all sorts of different things. Pop Clip is a super awesome app. This brings the pop over menu from iOS to macOS, but expands upon it. It has all the stuff iOS has like spell check, cut, copy, paste, and even search. But where it gets really powerful is its extension support. While I don't really need the cut, copy, and paste options, one option that I do use in PopClip is paste and match style. This strips all the rich text out of something that you've copied and will just paste it as plain text. For some reason, I can never remember the keyboard shortcut for paste and match style. 
I also have extensions for taking highlighted text and sending it to something like drafts or things. I use the things one a lot for creating new tasks out of emails. There's also a parcel extension so I can select a tracking number and then send it to the app. There are a ton of different extensions to install. There's actually a really handy website. I'll link to that and all the apps and everything I mentioned in the description below so you can kind of go through it and see if PopClip is for you. Next up is CleanShot X. macOS has a screenshot utility and it's it's pretty decent. It's built right in, but CleanShot X takes it a step further. So if you do a ton of screenshots, this is for you. First, there are a ton of settings to control what happens when you take a screenshot. So you can even do things like strip the wallpaper out of your screenshot and just use like a gradient background. You can customize the keyboard shortcuts. You can set default places to save images and there's even annotating options. But what I mostly use it for is what you're seeing right now, screen recordings. The built-in way Mac OS can do screen recordings is very cumbersome. So I set CleanShot X to start doing a screen recording when I hit the keyboard shortcut Command Shift 5. It also records at the native resolution, so I don't have to worry about the retina version. I get a high res recording I can use in my videos. It even shows all my key clicks and key strokes. If you do a lot of screenshots or screen recordings, CleanShot X is totally worth it. It will save you a ton of time. Next is Text Sniper. This is an app you can use for capturing text that isn't selectable. I use this in Final Cut a lot, so I have all my chapters on the side, but I can't highlight and copy the, those names and time codes. So what I did is I set up Text Sniper to become active when I hit Command Shift 2, and then I can just drag a window over that, and anything that's in that window gets OCR'd and copied right to my clipboard, so I can paste it wherever I need it to go. Extremely handy. Mission Control Plus is another utility, and it does exactly what it says on the 10. It adds some key features to Mission Control. The one that I use a lot is the ability to close windows right from Mission Control. It gives you an X, you can click it, closes the window. But it also gives you the ability to use keyboard shortcuts in Mission Control. So you can use Command Q to quit an app, or Command W to close a window, or Command H to hide windows. Rocket is a really cool idea. This lets you type the colon and then start typing an emoji name or emoji description and then select it and embed it right into wherever you're typing. This is so much faster than the built-in Mac OS emoji picker. So those are the Mac utility apps I have on my computer. I wanna hear from you. What are your favorite Mac utility apps you have on your computer? Let me know in the comments below. My thanks to Delta Hub for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.